computer. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So thanks everybody for, for coming. I'll, I'll record this and send it out and also um, share all the, uh, the, the slides to everybody. So um, if, you know, I think there's a lot of links in here. So um, hopefully this is something that's, that's useful for you. Um, and let's see if I can share my screen here. Okay. And present. So I think again, I was trying to tell everybody, but um, there's a little like raise your hand button um, on the side. So if uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to check in and out of the, um, the chat every once in a while, but just feel free to raise your hand and, um, and check that out. Let me just make sure that's like working for me right now. Um, if I stop, now I gotta go all the way to back to stop. Okay, yeah. All right, um, let's go back here. Get one. Okay. All right, so um, again, my name is Rob Flynn. Uh, I'm the tech integration specialist at Del Barton School. I've been in Del Barton for about 13 years. Um, and my Twitter is uh, Mr. Flynn Wave. Uh, so I, I was asked to um, kind of get going on this, uh, this NJIS concept of, of, making, um, of making webinars. And, and uh, this is sort of our first crack at it. So Feedback is really good. Um, I hope we get something out of this, but it's my first time doing this as well. Um, I'm in the school at an empty room at 8.07 at night and after three hours of football practice, can see PowerPoint, but I cannot see you, says Rachel. Um, what about now? Can you see me now? Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad if you can't see me. I don't know if there's a way to do like picture in picture here. No. Um, Hmm. All right. Well, I think I'm just going to go, I mean, as much as it's nice to see me, I think I'm just going to go over the PowerPoint if that's okay. Um, and we'll just go with, cause I don't really know how to fix that at this point. Um, okay. So it should be fine. Can hear you. Okay. This is cool. I'll just like, listen, I'll just read off Rachel's text while doing a uh, webinar while I'm sitting to myself. Um, great. So things we're going to cover today, uh, we're going to talk about safety and, and, you know, I think try to talk about some of the people's concerns when, when it comes to being on social media, especially as a teacher, uh, how to connect with other teachers and how to connect your classroom um, to parents and, and students. So I'm gonna sort of separate some of those and separate sort of the, the connecting with other teachers. Need to reshare screen, okay. Thank you, Rachel. This is great, share, okay. All right, so those are the things I just said. Like I said, topics, safety, connecting with teachers. So I'm gonna sort of separate uh, Twitter when we talk about connecting to other teachers and connecting our classrooms um, to parents and students with Instagram. Uh, I'm not, you can probably use one for the other. Uh, it's, they're not mutually exclusive. You can certainly connect with other teachers on Instagram and vice versa, um, but that's, that kind of makes sense to me. Um, and I'm kind of gearing this towards maybe people who are a little bit less familiar with um, with social media. So, um, first thing, all right. I know you know social media is something that 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 is a, is a concern for people. Um, and you know, what, what am I liable for? What if a student does this? What if a teacher does that? So, um, I think first of all, and when I talk to my teachers, it's like, well, well, why even run the risk? You know, it's like really scary clown. Why, why, why go there? You know, what, what's the, what's the point of, of running that? So I think the first part of that is obviously as professionals, um, the, the, the branding, the resume, um, I think branding is like, has a negative connotation. Um, but you know, there is, uh, some name recognition that, that I think can help you as a professional. I think if you believe in, in your school mission, you love your school. And I, I certainly believe in what we do at Del Barton and I love our mission and, and promoting that is, is very important to me, um, both to the greater community, but also to our, our current students and, and to everybody um, in our school. And then I think as a teacher too, to model behavior. Uh, it's, it's great, I think, when I hear that my students, um, my players follow me on Twitter and they joke about when I tweet about books and stuff like that, they say my, my Twitter is basically football and books. 
um, which is pretty much accurate, but they at least get a sense that, um, you know, I'm an adult and I'm a person and, and these are the ways that I treat people and these are the things that I say. And, and I think, I really think that's important. I think that there's a lot of bad actors out there. I think parents are, are out of control on social media to some degree. So I think for us as teachers to step into that educational space is, is very valuable. So just to throw some numbers at you, um, I think if you get high, I don't know if you anyways involved in the hiring process at, at your schools, uh, I'm involved. And the first thing that we do is we Google a person. And um, if, it ha if you have a social media presence, if you have you know, a, a set of YouTube videos, and like, it, it can really be a positive thing. Um, so not that to make or break, certainly there's negative things out there. That's something you have to worry about, but I think it really can be a, uh, a positive thing to, to see who you are and what you're about um, as an educator. Um, I'm going to use an example too of somebody I think who does a great job communicating the mission of the school. So this is um, Rick Dugan. He's the headmaster of Princeton Academy of Sacred Heart, He's MJ at school. And, um, and this is his, his Twitter. And one thing that he, he does is he's always out and about and just sort of tweeting what's going on in his school. Um, whether it's the start of the day, whether it's uh, some of the, the, the school events he has. And um, it's this big the hashtag that he uses is this, this Pash Proud. Um, and you can see that they've, they've really kind of gone all in uh, branding this, this message. And he's just, he's very, very focused on um, promoting some of the pillars of, of, of their school. And as a headmaster, he's really front and center with promoting the mission of the school. So um, just as an example of really doing it at the top um, administrative level. So, and just another thing to, to look at why do this. Um, this is a, a sample from the ISTE, the new ISTE educator standards. Um, I have a little link here. They're, they're really good food for thought, I think, for any educator. Uh, but a big part of this, uh, these standards are model and promote management of personal data, digital identity, and protect student data privacy, uh, mentor students in safe legal and ethical practice digital tools. So but really what is he saying is I think in order to be um, an educator in a modern context, it's important to have a social media, social media presence. That doesn't mean we have to share everything to students, but um, again, kind of sharing the why we're going to do this. So um, as you step into that space, you say, okay, I am going to do this. I am going to make a, you know, educational Twitter account, or I'm going to make a school or a class Instagram account, um, what do I need to think about? I think, you know, we used to just say, oh, you know, use your common sense. Uh, and I'm not sure that that's really something that necessarily applies anymore when you look at the world of social media and adults and, and what's being applied. So I'm gonna try to be very specific about what we talk to our teachers about at Del Barton. And I think what is important for you to think about at, if you step into this space. And one of the things that comes up a lot is this like acceptable use policy and sort of rethinking that to a recommended use policy or a best use policy. So in other words, don't just tell your, and if you're involved in the administration side of, of social media in the classroom, like don't just tell your teachers or students what not to do, tell them what to do. Uh, so that's gonna be, I think what I try to, what I try to do here. Um, are there questions so far? Everybody good? Yes, sort of. I'm getting no text from Rachel. She's probably gone. Okay, thank you, Jane. Okay, cool. I'll just like bump back every once in a while. Maybe that's some All right, we'll go back. Okay, so this is what uh, we rewrote our uh, educator social media policy. Um, and we defined, you know, social, Del Barton social media accounts are accounts uh, to use as an extension of their roles as educators of Del Barton. Um, and these are some things we expected of the teachers. So these are positive things we want people to do. We want to clearly identify yourself. We want you to be polite. We want you to use tags and links. We want you to use these hashtags that we, that we use. We want you to remain apolitical. Um, we, you know, we try to, uh, there's probably some things that we could add into here, but um, that, that's what we want us to do. And then I think this is very important. So, and not to say we have this right, wrong, or indifferent, um, but these are the things that we said that, that we want our, we're comfortable with our interaction with students. So 
uh, we students are welcome to visit our social media pages. So like I said, when my students visit my Twitter, totally fine. Um, but Del Barton social media pages shouldn't follow private accounts run by students. So you should not, and this is hard because every social media is different. Snapchat's different than Instagram is different than, so we try to sort of use general language here. And I think that might help. I, I hope that helps you think about it conceptually, but so you shouldn't, follow a student on Facebook because Facebook is sort of a private world where Twitter is sort of by nature more open. Um, where if there's a private Instagram account to ask a follow to a student's private Instagram account, like that's where we drew the line. Not to say you have to draw the line there, but um, that's where we felt like we, we were less comfortable with a, with a Del Barton like run or, or a Del Barton sanctioned account. Um, but they could follow or respond publicly to any public account. So if a student has an open Twitter account and you have an open Twitter account, then you can interact, which, which makes sense, I think. So we just wanted all that interaction to be out in the open. So if there's a public commenting um, function, that's fine. If, it's a, if there's a private chat or a private direct message or something like that, that's, that's what we wanted to avoid. Um, so you can kind of see that within our policy. And, and I think this was a really good step for us. I think, you know, it, it's very hard to like, you know, there's YouTube and Instagram and fa like, there's just a million things, but I think we wanted to just, what was open to be okay and what was private to be avoided um, for obvious sort of liability issues. And then we had, you know, wanted to have like a clear reporting structure for what we saw, because obviously if you're in these spaces with kids, you're going to see them do things that, that need to be addressed. And that's totally okay. That's like part of the reason why you want to be in those spaces. It's to help kids when you do see something that um, isn't right. So uh, cool, Justin Timberlake gifts. So like really, I would check with whoever your, whatever your policy is before, um, you know, before looking at it. Obviously, like if you're in a K through six space, it's going to be different than a seven through 12. And so just some questions to ask for us to be the assistant headmaster, but whoever it is that would make sense for you and your school. Um, can I post pictures of my students? Can I use my school's name? Um, do I have to like tell my administrators of my account details? And how do I interact with my students? So I think that's all just kind of good, basic, fair practice, something, something to think about. Okay. Um, questions? Good. Chat function, so far so good, okay, cool. All right. Uh, I gotta keep remembering to share. All good here, okay. Rachel Fallen, thumbs up, NGIS, okay. Wait, all right, all right, okay. All right, so just one thing I do for privacy, um, for what it's worth, is I use these little stickers to put over the kids' heads. Um, I, I'm allowed to use their likeness, but um, I teach eighth graders and I just, again, like, I think it's good for our kids to be thinking about privacy online. So, so this is something I kind of went to, not to say again, it's, it's necessarily like the thing you need to do, but um, I thought it was good, good practice um, to go with. So, uh, all right, let's talk about Twitter for a little bit. So um, when you're connecting, like using Twitter to connect to teachers. So we're gonna talk about examples, we're going to talk about some hashtags that, that would be relevant for you, content that you can use, and, and challenges of, of connecting with Twitter. So um, this is a quote I liked about Twitter. I've been on Twitter for about, I don't know, eight years. Uh, it's been an incredibly powerful professional development tool for me because I think in independent schools, you're very, like, I mean, I teach in a, you know, in a Benedictine Catholic school, and I'm a technology integration specialist. So I personally need ways to find other people to find uh, what's going on um, in the world of education and in the world of ed tech and all these cool people that I wish I went to, went to high school with. So uh, I always like this, this quote here. Um, so I, you know, again, the kids joke that my, my Twitter is about reading. Uh, it's about books. I'm an English teacher. I love reading and books uh, it's about technology for me and, and uh, football, you know, I have a ton of football stuff and um, I've used that, used that a lot. So, and, you know, I also want to say that, like, I'm not really a big share person. I'm, I'm kind of an introverted person to begin with. And, like, that's okay. You can be introverted and just lurk 
and, and, and kind of be in this little world where you're just exposed to a lot of cool things and not share. That's totally fine. I think that's actually one of the great functions of Twitter um, that, that you can use it for. So that's totally cool. So just, I'm going to throw a couple examples at you. So first, just like resources and work worksheets. Um, this is the kind of stuff that is, is all over the place, like where people just will tweet like a picture of their, um, what they're doing in class that day. Uh, another example, um, actual, like awesome, amazing teachers that are on Twitter. Uh, I'm an English teacher. So Kelly Gallagher, you know, has so many resources on there, um, that he puts up and like, Oh, here's something about, media bias like he does this all yeah and i'm gonna load pdfs in my chrome it's really annoying but um uh you know so so he puts a bunch of resources out he's incredibly um you know powerful like penny kittle is another really big one that that i follow um for english that she's just she has great books she's just around the world and and um I've, I've subsequently like from following her on Twitter, buy her books and read her stuff and have learned a lot about teaching English uh, in 2019 because of this. So that's cool. Um, you can find teachers within your discipline. Um, so just here's a list and I won't go through all these, but um, I think there's a list, there's, there's really good lists about in whether you teach science or uh, specials or second grade or I mean, whatever it is, um, there's a lot of people who are throughout the country, throughout the world that are um, teaching in your discipline. And I'll show you how to find uh, content specifically for your discipline in a second. Um, professionals. I think this is a very underutilized part of, of Twitter. So there are great authors that are on Twitter. This guy, Jason Reynolds, is a, is a pretty great uh, young adult literature poet. Um, and he's really active on Twitter. So it, it's very cool when you're an English teacher to be able to say like, hey, here's this guy who is, he's a real reader, he's a real person, this is him. He's like tweeting all the time. Um, I've had uh, authors tweet back at me in my class when I talk to them about stuff. Um, so that's a really great thing. I mean, and so what, if you're a science teacher, whether you're looking to connect to any kind of professional world, I think there's, there's a great way to reach out um, using Twitter. There's, uh, I, I love this button poetry. Um, so you can go right to like art and artists, um, people creating uh, stuff and like finding this content. Um, so this is stuff that I've pulled button poetry and use it in my class because this like, when you teach poetry to eighth graders and there's not like some spoken word like intensity to it, they're not gonna care. So this has really helped me and honestly, tell myself, like, I like poetry a lot more than I used to um, because I found this button poetry Twitter and their um, large provider spoken word performance and slam poetry media. I had no idea this existed. And it's just like every day, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. So, um, and just, there's something about like a performance, you know, for uh, a video for these guys rather than it being, um, you know, text. So using that and apps, this was a, a tip from um, Jen Garvey that you know i think everybody's forced to like it's like flipgrid is a new thing or whatever the new thing is at your school um that maybe your administrator is pushing on you uh flipgrid i think is it for a lot of places uh there's an app and obviously like what they're doing with their app social media is they're putting out propaganda about their app and, and it's all very very positive stuff but if you look at and you go into the people that are tweeting about the app I think you'll find some stuff that is um, a little bit more honest. So I'm, I'm sort of less interested in like Flipgrid content itself as being like, all right, well, I use Flipgrid. Here's a teacher that also uses Flipgrid in Tennessee. Um, so let's see like what she's doing, you know, and, and maybe she'll do something that I can relate to or I can um, respond to something like that. Okay uh and yeah so so it's just a couple kind of quick examples of the kind of content i i like i respond to very positively um i also i want to speak for a minute about like coaching and and your coaches on twitter um because that's something that is kind of just very dear to my heart so um just bear with me if that's not uh so one thing i found is like a lot of drill tape 
So like this is a this is a pass rush move that I teach, um, and there's all this stuff on social media, D line vids. I'm a defensive line coach of Khalil Mack using it. Um, so you can find kind of really good examples. There's full clinics and and conversations that are happening. Uh, you know, specific for me to football, but about every sport. Um, about you know how to stop the spread offense, and so here's this long YouTube video now. Do you want to know what defenses are doing on third down? Like, so maybe me solo. And so here's a whole. Uh, there's just all this, all this content about you know specifically football, but really about anything. Um, and there's places like the Positive Coaching Alliance, uh, sort of more general coaching things. I think if you're in a K through eight space, uh, this this can be really. Um, a really positive thing for you. So people are involved in athletics uh, in, in any capacity in a school. I think you can get something really meaningful out of social media. There's great, um, great learning to be had about sports and social media. If you're a coach, you know, you always have to keep learning about the game um, and, and social Twitter can be great that way. So if you're new to this stuff, I think a great way to start is to just start like lurking on hashtags. So I got a couple lists of here's just some hashtags in education. We'll come back to these. So these are the basic ones, ed chat, ed tech, education. And if you're not familiar with a hashtag, it, a tag is just a way, obviously you have like a little number sign in the word. It's a way of classifying information. Um, so if I have a tweet about um, teaching, you know, and I classify it hashtag teaching, people that search for hashtag teaching, it'll, it'll come up. Um, so it's, it's just a form of, of, of classification really. And it, it dials down all, all the way to teaching English, social studies, math, science, arts, STEM, um, and, and there's a lot more. So um, I'll show you how to use hashtags to sort of find some things that you're looking for. Um, and then on top of that, there are ed chats. So ed chats use hashtags in order to facilitate online conversations that happen regularly. So, and as you can see, there are, this is a full, somewhat full list of hashtags. There are a lot of ed chats. There are a lot of ed chats. So here's a social studies chat that happens every Monday at seven o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. Every Monday, social studies teachers get on here and they just they talk social studies. Um, so we'll take a look at that. So that's, that's, that's chat. Well, um, English teacher chat happens every Monday, also at, at seven o'clock. It's a lot of the direction. So kinder, I saw a kindergarten one, right? Kindergarten early. So kinder chat, right? And we might have some early uh, early elementary teachers in here. So we'll we'll take a look at that. I mean, but it like goes on and on, right? So this is a great way if you're if you don't have a great like professional learning network, um, personal learning network to find some people that um, you're just trying to find people that are dealing with the same problems that you're dealing with, um, that are asking the same questions that are trying to do the same thing uh, that you're doing. At least that's that's what I'm trying to do most of the time. You know, I'm trying to coach my kids better. I'm trying to teach English better. Um, trying to help my teachers with technology. So uh, here's just to kind of put you in the in the mode here. So uh, I'm gonna go to Twitter. I hope this works. I'm gonna log out. Um, I made a little um, blank. Of course, we have to verify my phone number. Give me one second. I made a blank Twitter. And Nine six four six two four. Wow, I've never had it sent to me as a like voicemail. Okay, whatever. That was weird. Um. So okay. So anyway, here's a blank blank Twitter. So here you are. You can follow along. Wait, hold on, real quick. Let me just make sure. Everybody okay? I'm not a huge social media person. What question you give is guiding me on how my daughter in boarding school can also understand school. I'm not that knowledgeable. Okay. Um. Read this slower. I am not a huge social media person, says Jane. 
but the explanation you give is guiding me on how my daughter in boarding school can also understand social media. Okay. I'm not gonna do that. okay. So, um, two things. One, uh, totally okay to not be knowledgeable. Uh, I'm going to sort of gear some things right now to maybe people who aren't that familiar. Um, but two, like, I would just warn you too that the teenage world of social media, the teenage girl boarding school world of social media uh, is maybe somewhat like we're talking about, but is probably, you know, really its own beast as well. So I, I would just say that a little bit as a disclaimer, but um, I hope this helps in any way. So, all right, so you have this empty Twitter. All right, so I'm a kindergarten teacher. Wait, I gotta reshare this. Do, 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 do. Share you. Okay. All right. So here we go. I got my empty Twitter. And I'm I'm a kindergarten teacher and I don't know where to start. So I'm gonna just search on one of these chats that I found. So here's a little right, we found a little kinder chat. All right, and you can search a hashtag. So what this does is it just sort of goes for uh any of the top content. Um, that however they, they decide that. And so now I can find out and just kind of scroll through here and see um, what people are talking about in, in this hashtag. So um, let's see, I'm really trying to find my place in preschool, it's a good start. Uh, family dynamics, um, and we can even go, Pinterest worthy decorated classroom does not improve learning or relationships within that room, oh yeah. Maybe this is something I agree. So I could maybe follow um, some of these people. And then when this, this sort of jumps up, I, there might be some other friends or, or whatever. So I can start um, kind of building uh, people that I'm interested in based on some of the, some of the chats here. So maybe I'm, I'm a social studies teacher. I can search social studies chat. And all right, so here's a cool Buzzfeed article. Maybe I'll like this. Check out what this guy's about. Oh, he looks like he's a leader for social studies chat and this improv history. So I don't know what this is. Um, looks like it's like an improv group that has to do with history. Um, so you, you get the idea. So that, that's, I think, a really good way to start um, to start familiarizing yourself with the, with the conversation. Like one thing I love is the National Council of Teachers of English uh, their little hashtag NCTE village. Um, people are super active in this. So here's a little conversation about what are some strategies used when grading, right? I mean, like, there's a huge conversation that we can have about this. Um, so not only does she have some thoughts, right, and talking about Google Classroom, um, but we can kind of go through this and get a couple different ideas. We can respond, all right, all that stuff. So. Um, that's kind of what I would do in terms of like starting from scratch, um, is to use the hashtags as a way to, whoops, as a way to, um, find some people and find some conversation. Like you can go back, uh, to this list, uh, to just kind of get started with that. So th that might be a good way for, for people who are, um, you know, just starting. So then, you know, as you build your, your PLN um, and you're, you get a little bit more involved with, with Twitter, you find some people, you find some content that, that you like and you want to start to get in this posting world, um, some things to think about posting. So I think what you're doing in class uh, is it's a great, great thing. My headmaster actually said to me, like, I love it when you tweet and I just like can see just what you're doing in class. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do that more because I want you to like what I'm doing in class. Um, but then, you know, it gives people a chance to respond. It also gives you a chance to be a little bit thoughtful about what it is you actually are doing in class um, for me. I think uh, you can also ask like questions and clarifications. So if you go on and say, uh, all right, so Matthew Jordan knows he was writing the same four comments that it does. So he typed them, printed on different colored labels. Oh, that's interesting. So you might like respond and say, um, you know, what, uh, what, labels did he use right and so like that's a really nice non-threatening way for me about how to like enter in a conversation it's just be like well how did he do that or what you know like just to ask somebody to to give more information and continue the conversation 
So, so I really like asking quite like, if I saw, if I see something I like, I'm like, tell me more about that or whatever. So, so that's something just piece of advice. Um, obviously ideas that you have like wait. I mean, you know, it's a little bit of a self promotion gig, but, um, accomplishments that your, your kids have, I think especially can be, um, can be really powerful, especially if your parents know. And, um, obviously like, you know, posting within the hashtag. So most of the time these ed chats have questions tagged to them. So, um, you can, you can be involved in those ed chats that way. Okay. Uh, as you get involved in Twitter, just some things like challenges, things to, um, to get you going, uh, finding some people you admire, maybe posting every day. I think that's a good sort of way to, fo you know, force yourself into the habit of using social media. Um, finding out what your school's hashtag is. Do they have a hashtag? Should you create a hashtag? That's something that I think is, is uh, actually is valuable within the school branding. And then you can say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting the school's brand. Um, or I'm trying to with what I'm doing in the classroom. I'm telling my story and how it builds into the mission of the school. I think that's an important thing. Um, and like I said before, I think engaging in an ed chat is, um, is, is something, one of these weekly chats uh, can, can be a real, like, it's all about resilience, this chat. That's cool. It's at 10 o'clock at night, probably why it's, you have to be resilient because you're going to be tired the next day. Um, it's cool. You can just tell jokes in a webinar and you don't even know if people are laughing. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, all right. So that's kind of it for me with Twitter. Uh, I'm going to go sort of move over to Instagram. Um, so I, and again, I, I think about Twitter personally, this is not necessarily right or wrong, but I think about Twitter, uh, with connecting with teachers. I think about Instagram in terms of connecting with students and parents. Um, I think, we mentioned, uh, you know, your, uh, someone's daughter, right? Instagram is probably, you know, something that they use. Like kids don't use Twitter anymore. It's not cool. It hasn't been cool for a while, actually. Um, before I go to Instagram, are there any other questions about, okay, so class dojo for my second grade parents, classroom highlights. Okay, cool. So Jane mentioned um, class dojo in the comments in very cool app, um, uh, has a lot of features. And I think there might be some crossover a little bit, Jane, with um, Instagram with, with some of the stuff we're about to talk about. So hopefully that's in terms of like having a classroom account. And I forgot to share my screen again. Let me do that. But we good? Questions? Problems? Rachel's gone dark. She's there somewhere in Rhode Island. All right. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, I'm going to leave about 15 minutes for questions and to hang out. Um, uh, towards the end too. So uh, why is Instagram a good vehicle again for students and parents? Uh, it's good for quick visual output, obviously. Um, it features pictures and video. It's very popular for parents, for moms. So you're kind of hitting moms like, and moms are the ones that, that are gonna, they want the information, right? Uh, where it's hitting them where they are and I think it's great for, again, because it's visual, it's great for specials and elementary school projects, uh, things like that. So I, I sort of see Instagram a little bit more in the K-8 space myself, um, but I certainly have some examples. So obviously, like, we're in independent schools. They, they, they pay a lot of money to send their kids to our schools. Um, you know, they, they want feedback. So, so the helicopter parent thing is very real. And, you know, I think... Instagram, social media, a classroom account can be something that, so this is an example from Seesaw that like can, can be a really positive way to start a conversation. Um, if you put something on Instagram uh, of a really fun activity that they did that day, you know, maybe that next interaction that you have with a parent can sort of be a little bit easier because they have an entry point into your classroom that's very like, it's, it's, it's easy. It's not high maintenance. It's not like uh, behavior uh, tracking software. It's just like, Hey, this is a fun thing we did on Instagram and you're sharing that. So um, why is Instagram good? And this is a repeat slide. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about creating a class page really here. Okay. 
So a class page, so I'm teaching second grade. Here's my second grade page, and I'm going to put some content out for parents to follow, and, and, or, and maybe even as the kids get older, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, uh, high school, that the kids actually are involved in, uh, in communicating within the platform platform as well. I'll show you some examples of that next week. So uh, tell parents that you're going to do this. Obviously, tell your administration that you're going to do this. I think if you're going to have a K through three or K through four Instagram page and not tell the parents that it's going to happen. And they see that, like, I think that's really privacy in those spaces. Uh, people get, I think as kids get to be 16, 17, 18, parents don't really care. Administration, it's less of a factor. Uh, it's a bigger deal. So send something home to the parents. Let them, let them opt out if they want to, like let their kids like this not be used if they want to, just for whatever reason. Um, public versus private. So you can make Instagram pages public or private. Public meaning it's, they can't, a person can't view pictures without going um, and requesting a follow versus private. I would make the page private because you're talking about young kids, um, it's kind of a, stranger danger factor here so that would be my advice uh you don't have to take it but um that would be my advice for that i think you could assign students a photography role teach digital citizenship so i'm teaching third grade i want to have a class page on instagram i don't want to do all the effort to like think and pull out my phone and do all that but maybe i have a classroom ipad that's linked to the instagram and one of the jobs every day is to be like the photographer and i can help work with that student on that day to be like, well, this is how you should post something on Instagram. You should make sure that it's a good picture. You should make sure that um, you're not, no one's doing anything illegal. You know, you, you can sort of work in some soft digital citizenship teaching with young kids um, by being in charge of their, their account there. So, um, and I think you got to ask like, should you follow students or not? Um, again, this is sort of as, a, as an older space. So those are things, that's a question I would ask. Uh, again, back to like the questions you ask your administration before you go into that. I think you would, you got to think about that. Um, and, you know, hashtags, content policies, it should be kind of similar. Theoretically, if you can post a kid's picture to Twitter, Instagram should really be the same, same thing. So uh, Instagram is useful because you can, you can put 10 photos or videos in a single post. You can do live video stories. Like it, it, it's, you know, it's really a, a multimedia platform unlike Twitter um, made for, for the visual stuff. So um, this is a quote, just like, why would we do this? So this is a quote from a science teacher at my school. She teaches uh, 10th grade chemistry and she wanted to create an Instagram account. This is why she wanted to do it. So She's going to fill it with junk science uh, and highlight items of interest, pop up for their explore topics we're studying in class. So this is just her, it's her Twitter. Those with Minardi, she's awesome. She's her science department chairperson. She's a rock star. Um, and she's just starting. So, so these are some of the one pagers that she's doing in class. Um, she just like posts like geeky stuff about science uh, and kids, kids are into it. So here's kind of a, the, science experiment they did. So she told the parents about it and, and back to school night. Um, so it's an example there. But again, like I want you to know why she wanted to do it, right? So this, I love the idea that she's like, gonna have a science Instagram where she talks about junk science and um, kind of information uh, awareness, stuff like that. So a couple quick examples of, I think, really positive uh, Instagram accounts. So this is a four through six space. Uh, this woman madly learning where she kind of posts pictures of her school uh, herself, like some of the visual stuff she does in class. I know the classroom setup is really important in the K eight space. Uh, I know a lot of teachers use Pinterest. So I could probably do a whole webinar on Pinterest. Um, and you know, you can see kind of a mixture of like some personal and some some class stuff, uh, and and that's cool. Cool. Uh, art, I think, is kind of a no brainer. Um, some art classes that kids are doing, uh, videos, things like that. So you get an idea of kind of what, like visually, there's there's a nice part here. Um, great way to show student work. Uh, this is one of our teachers, this high school math teacher. Um, 
he did this thing. This is sort of more for him connecting with the students. Um, but he said that if he gets enough likes on a post, he's going to um, allow the kids to use a um, to use a formula sheet on the final. Uh, and he got like, I don't know, like 3,000 likes or something on this post. I'm trying, oh yeah, 2,300 2, likes on this post. So the kids like totally blew it out of the water. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it kind of went, went viral. Um, there's kit like, so just was again, sort of modeling some things in this space, but being, being aware of, uh, being in the same space as students are, I thought was cool. And, um, this is a science, a science curriculum designer. So this is sort of a older space. Um, but just a couple different examples of some Instagram posts. So day 46. Okay. Uh, just some, some kind of summaries. I think starting slow, lurking is okay. Just find some people that, you know, you like and, and you think are smart and steal what they do. Um, that's really a lot of what I've done, um, to be honest, whether it's in the coaching world or in the, in the teaching world. Uh, and I think, you know, really modeling behavior. Um, I think I'm, I'm proud of the leg. This is like, sounds weird, but you know, I have seven, eight years of my teaching life and thoughts on Twitter, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm proud of that. Like I've, I've thought about what, what's on there, but, um, I, I think like if a future employer or one of my students like wants to go back through, um, my feed and see the kind of person I am, obviously I've been thoughtful about what I put on there, but, um, I, I think that's, that's something that is, is a positive thing for, for my kids, um, who, you know, they need positive social media role models. Uh, so that's kind of it. Um, cool. Uh, so if people have questions, I can unmute you all. I think I can, I'll just try unmuting everybody. Um, but if, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, Catholic school, Rachel says, thank you. Uh, you can like go in peace. The Catholic school thing. Um, but if you have any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to hang around for a little bit. So thank you all for, for coming and I'll, I'll put some resources in the event thing and, and email it to you. Rob, real quick. What's up? Um, you recommended uh, K to four um, as sort of the range for private uh, Instagram use, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what, why K to four? I mean, most terms and conditions for social media use like under COPA are 13 years. So why not right. eighth grade? Right. So I'm, uh, to be honest, like I'm less familiar with like, or I guess I'm less aware of some of the COPA stuff because, you know, we're mostly a high school space. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend a K through four kids start a private Instagram account. I think what I was referring to is that, well, first of all, the reality is that like nine year olds have an Instagram account, you know? So yeah. like, and I know, I don't mean to deflect the question, but that's like parents know that administrators know that teachers know that. So like, it's sort of this ridiculous, like dirty seat. You know what I mean? Like this, mm -hmm. this sort of weird space. That being said, what I would recommend is that like you have a classroom account and a K, in a K through four space, and a third grader can like take a picture in your classroom and you help them post with your approval onto your, like the adult's classroom account. Right, that make, right. That makes sense? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Because um, I think like the reality is the kids will get Instagram accounts, whatever, five, fifth, sixth grade, right? Many of them. So, um, you can kind of help them be maybe that guide on the side kind of thing. I don't know. Honestly, like, is that illegal? I don't, I don't think it is, but again, that'd be something I would ask, um, an administrator maybe before I started, started doing that. I think transparency is really good with your administration. I mean, what do you, Brendan, does that sound like? Yeah, no, craziness? I think because the, think? the adult is the user, um, and like you said, as long as there's parent buy-in and nobody, you know, has kind of raised the red flag, that makes sense. Um, 
you know, uh, I, I guess my, you know, it's kind of the, the bigger question of, you know, um, fourth versus fifth grade, you know, mm. um, like starting in middle school. Um, right. Is it then okay to have like a public class account? And I'm not expecting you to answer the question. I'm just kind of wondering out yeah. loud, you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I don't know, something to think about. I, I mean, I do think that like K through eight spaces would do well to think about like how they, uh, like the scope and sequence of what they teach and like the gradual release of responsibility into as the kids get older, you know, and that's kind of what you're saying, you know, and so yeah. uh, when, when are they allowed some kind of private account um, legally and ethically, when can they sort of post alongside a teacher? Um, when can they use something like kid blog, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's a really good, really good question. But I, I, I think what's been hard, well, hard for me, but like, I think you got to push this with your administration, you know, at least I think in a lot of spaces you do because they don't want, like, this is not a, this is kind of a hot button. People don't want to touch the social media thing in the classroom. Um, so I, I've tried to be very proactive about like making sure we have a policy and saying we do want our teachers to do this and we do want this in the classroom. Um, but that, you know, it's taken years for us to get anywhere. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? Like, good. All right. Um, awesome. It's almost nine o'clock. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording.